everybody, it's me, the excellent. We were back for another video, and today I wanted to do a video on the one and only leader of Los Ingobernables de Japón, Tetsu Yanaido, who, after running into string after string of bad luck and huge losses in 2019, he managed to save his career from being totally destroyed. Now we all know how Tetsu Yanaido was pushed as the next big baby face with his Stardust Genius gimmick. He was set to be the next Hiroshi Tanahashi when Tanahashi wasn't ready to transition out of the spotlight and he was being pushed hard as at one point he won the G1 Climax, he would main event Wrestle Kingdom as well as holding the never open weight title. However, Naito was getting the Roman Reigns treatment and the fans were not happy about this new found star that New Japan was pushing. Now we all know how the rest of the story goes, Naito got pushed out of the main event scene, he left on excursion, only to come back to New Japan as a star with his brand new Tranquilo and slash LIJ gimmick. However, he would slowly gain traction and popularity as he would achieve major victory after major victory and would end up winning the IWGP heavyweight title from Okada. He'd also win the IWGP Intercontinental Championship, and he also managed to beat Hiroshi Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom 11, which is something that has rarely been done. He would hold on to the IC title until that year's Dominion, where he would end up losing to Tanahashi. And after that amazing, amazing heel run with the title, the G1 Climax was looming ahead. And Naito was announced to be participating, where he would end up going the distance and winning the 27th G1 Climax. And the next logical step for him was to go after Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 12. This was supposed to be something special because Naito was supposed to main event Wrestle Kingdom 9 years ago. But New Japan held a fan vote where the fans who hated Naito because of his squeaky clean good guy gimmick voted for the IWGP Intercontinental Championship match of Hiroshi Tanahashi vs Shinsuke Nakamura to be the main event instead. This was also the peak of Tetsu Yanaido's popularity where every show leading up to Wrestle Kingdom, every crowd would get louder and louder just for Tetsuya Naito. After a good build, finally the day of Wrestle Kingdom 12 had arrived as Tetsuya Naito would finally have his Wrestle Kingdom main event. Now just look back on his entrance during this match. You can see that every single person is behind Tetsuya Naito. Okada got some, so got, you know, he got a good reaction, but Everyone in that building was wearing LIJ merch, and everyone in that building wanted to see Tetsu Yanaido come out on top as the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. The two would end up having a genuinely good match, as many of the people were on the edge of their seats as the two put on a clinic with counter after counter and many, many rainmakers and destinos until finally. One last Rainmaker put Naito away for the three count. The breath was taken away from the audience, and not in a good way, as no offense to Okada, but nobody in the Tokyo Dome or outside of it wanted to see him win. After this huge loss to Tetsuya Naito, he would end up finding himself being toiled with as it seemed that New Japan didn't really have any plans for Naito moving forward after Wrestle Kingdom 12. Naito would find himself entering a feud with the big bad murder daddy Minoru Suzuki, where he would end up beating him and becoming the IWGP IC Champion. Naito would move on to a feud with Chris Jericho, who had attacked him earlier in the year with an incredible build, and after an incredible match at Dominion, he would end up losing the IWGP Intercontinental Championship to Chris Jericho, after holding on to the title for only 41 days with no successful title defenses. After losing the IWGP IC title, the G1 Climax would hopefully be the next step for Tetsu Yanaido as he would try to win the G1 Climax for the third time, but he would end up coming in fourth place in his block. After the IC title loss and the G1 loss, 
Naito would transition back to trying to get the Intercontinental Championship back from Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom 13. And he would finally achieve his first major victory since losing at Wrestle Kingdom 12 by beating Chris Jericho and taking back his IC title. Naito, not being satisfied with just the IC title, took part in the New Japan Cup, where the winner would end up facing Jay White in the main event of the G1 Supercard for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. However, Tetsuya Naito would end up losing in the first round against Kota Ibushi. This loss would lead to Kota Ibushi earning a IWGP Intercontinental Championship match at the same event, but unfortunately for Naito, he would end up losing the title once again. So it seemed as though whenever Tetsuya Naito held on to the IC title, he would not hold on to it for long, which is not the best way to build a champion. Tetsuya Naito would end up winning the title back from Ibushi, and unlike his last reign, he ended up holding the title for over 105 days and would actually defend the title successfully more than once. But these reigns with the IC title, they never seem to set the world on fire like how his first title reign did. Everyone remembers his first IWGP Intercontinental title reign as it was something that was fresh and unique, something that we hadn't seen for quite some time. Tetsuya Naito's lack of care for the belt, his heel work, popularity were just off the charts. His IC title reigns after that never felt special and they felt as though they were just giving him the title not for him to do anything with it but just to give it to him on a whim. Naito would rack up another G1 loss along with another IC title loss this time to Jay White. But this loss was more for Tetsuya Naito's own benefit because at the time Tetsuya Naito needed to get eye surgery because apparently the muscles in his eyes were paralyzed and he couldn't focus his vision. Ironically, he would need to use his actual taunt to actually see, but it was that bad that he needed to put a lot of focus and energy just to walk to the ring, and he would need surgery. After Naito returned from his surgery, he would face Taichi, beat him, then challenge Jay White for the IC title that he had lost, but also this is the first time that Tetsuya Naito brought up the idea of holding both the IWGP Heavyweight and the IC title at the same time. This idea was also entangled with the G1 Climax winner of that year, which was Kota Ibushi, as he was also interested in holding both titles as well as Jay White, and as he was the IC champion at the time. Okada was the only one who seemed to not be interested in holding both titles, but in just keeping the heavyweight title. Just as the first ever IWGP Dual Champion would be crowned, this would be the first time that Wrestle Kingdom would be held on two separate days, and on night one, Jay White would take on Tetsuya Naito to defend his IWGP Intercontinental Championship, and Ibushi would take on Okada in the main event. Jay White and Naito had a particularly good match, however Jay White would not be moving on to face the winner of the main event as Tetsuya Naito would regain his Intercontinental title and move on. Ibushi and Okada were now next on the main event and these two put on a master class of a match. However, this would not be Ibushi's shining moment in the sun as Okada would come out on top and would face Naito in a Wrestle Kingdom 12 rematch. Something interesting about this match was the fact that this would be the third time that Naito and Okada would face each other at Wrestle Kingdom, and Okada has only done that with one other person, that being Hiroshi Tanahashi. This was a must-win situation for Tetsuya Naito because all of the losses that he had suffered in 2019, this would be the most devastating and it would not be one that he would be able to recover from. So he needed to write his Wrestle Kingdom 12 loss. And he would do exactly that as he would end up beating Okada and be the first person to hold the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Championship at the same time. And although it happened two years after it should have happened, it's still great to see Tetsuya Naito on top of the Japanese wrestling world because 
he really does deserve it. Because through all of the bullshit that he went through before his excursion, during his excursion, and after, after everything he went through, he persevered. He made it through to the end and made history to become the IWGP Dual Champion. And he made both of those titles tranquilos.